Uh, my name is Torn O'Haran. I'm from Rockland, California. I go to Rockland High School. I'm uh, signed to go to Stanford. I uh, committed there as a freshman, and it's been a long four years, that's for sure, and taking a lot of hard work and a lot of hard work, especially in the classroom. And I play baseball, and I'm a four-year varsity letterman in baseball and a three-year varsity letterman in football. And all I've done my whole life is play sports, and it's all I know and it's all I do. I mean, I kind of play with my emotions on my sleeves. I've always been a person that like lets everything out and gives everything I have and then some. And uh, just kind of to where it kind of came from was when I was growing up, my parents used to call me Popeye because I've always kind of had a little bit of a short temper, I guess you could say. And uh, little things will usually set me off, but I think I kind of changed it into having this passion for sports. And, and especially in that picture, it's it was a big situation in the game and got the strikeout we needed. And I don't know, it just all happens so naturally. You don't really think about it. You almost kind of black out in a way. So, I mean, that's just kind of what I live for. Like those moments where the adrenaline's super high and the stakes are really high. Like that's when I thrive, so. The first moment you found out Stanford had any interest in you, what was that like? <laughs> so the first moment I found out Stanford had any interest in me was, I think it was two weeks into my freshman year, I went down there just to, for like a, kind of just like a small camp. I didn't really think anything of it. I I had a, I had a few offers at the point at this point and wasn't really thinking Stanford was gonna pull the trigger because I had known the reputation of not offering freshmen until after their freshman year because they wanna make sure you can do in the classroom and hang hang in there in that aspect. But uh, I get down there and I had a great outing. I think I went two innings, five strikeouts, no hits. And the coach comes out to me and goes, do you wanna play for Stanford? And I was like, that's my dream. And he was just like, okay, we'll, we'll see how it, we'll see how it goes over this next year in the classroom. And, and then like, I would say four months later, it wasn't really even, sad. yeah, it wasn't even really at the end of the year. Like, they're like, all right, we're ready to pull the trigger on the offer. And then the day before the day of my last, the last day of freshman year, I was like, called him. I said, Hey, ready to be a Cardinal. And that's all she wrote. My first steps to mentally be prepared. Like, you can never do anything on the baseball field if you're not mentally ready to do it. I mean, you can be an athlete and be physically gifted, but if you're not mentally ready to go in any aspect of it, you're not gonna be able to compete or not be able to make the play. So I think for me, it's always mentally being ready to go before the pitch even happens, or I swing the bat, or I take my first step in the outfield. It's being 100% there and 100% focused on what the task is and accomplishing it, so. Nice. Yeah. I like it. What, um we're getting a lot of athletes especially going on to to major sport uh colleges and stuff like that <clears throat> the amount of time that you spend yeah. in your craft is it, it, we're hearing it's amazing what is your <laughs> process what is the amount of time that you can think of that you're putting into your sport on a regular basis uh just kind of so just kind of start from the beginning like i never grew up playing one sport i was always a multi-sport athlete my parents said that from the beginning, hey, you're never gonna be allowed to just play one sport. And I never kind of really understood it and was like, okay, I guess I'll just play multiple sports. I always played football, basketball, baseball, did soccer growing up, did rugby, just kind of did everything and ran track also in middle school, but I just kind of never understood it. So I never really put much time when growing up into just one thing. It was just kind of, oh, it's baseball season. Okay, well, might as well start throwing again or football season. All right, let's just keep, go run routes. So, but then like, as I kind of got older, I kind of understood how it separates you in life and in many aspects, not even just on the field, is that you're more well-rounded as a human being. You're able to do more things on the field. And then once I kind of committed to baseball, like I had all this free time and to answer your question now, I mean, I would say probably three to four hours a day of just something that I'm focused on. Like, so I'm a really big into like, I like yoga. I like to stretch. I like to relax, get your mind settled down because I know when I step on the field, just like the picture earlier, it's it's time to go. Like you gotta be ready to go. And it's gonna be a lot of adrenaline going. So I like I'm very into calming myself down before and after. So I'm really big into all like like uh I know me and my mommy we used to do Bosu or what's it called? Uh, yeah. Yosu. Yeah. It's Bosu. yoga on a Bosu ball. So like I've done some pretty cool things and I think all that stuff just pays dividends to what actually happens on the field, being able to stay healthy being able to be really extremely explosive athlete. So I would say an hour and a half of working out four times a week, you have hitting every single day, you're throwing every day. If you're not throwing, you're doing a recovery throw, hot tub, 20 minute yoga session before you go to bed, 
waking up, making sure you get your thousand calories in before you leave for school. Like there's a, there's so many levels to being a division one athlete. I don't think a lot of people understand they, especially for the baseball players, because everyone makes the jokes about how you can easily get a D one scholarship for baseball, but they don't see the hours and hours put in when behind closed doors and the really late nights driving down to Sacramento to get just the 30 minutes of hitting, get some swings off the tee. So the next day you're feeling sharp before the game. So, yeah, I mean, it's really, it's really crazy. And like, for me, like I kind of fell in love with the process more than the product, honestly. Like I love like waking up early. Okay. Let's go get my swings in before a game today. Like that's the stuff I really enjoy. I mean, on the field winning games is obviously the most fun thing, but the process of every day, the grind waking up, knowing, like, Oh, I got four hours of just straight baseball today is like heaven. Like it, it's what I love to do. So recovery starts before the game, honestly. You need to be ready to go before the game to be able to perform in the game. So I spend, so if I get home, if we have a game at four o'clock, I'll be in the hot tub at noon, in the hot tub for 15 minutes, then a four minute shower in the cold shower, kind of balance it out. Then it's uh, get the uniform on, it's 20 minute yoga uh, hip and lower body stretch. Then we're off to the field, we take our BP and then it's all upper body stretching and then we'll get into the game and all that. And then we'll play, but then after I'm done throwing and I get home, I have a, uh, they're called red, they're called green one pound therapy balls. And I'll go through a series of uh, like rotator cuff and labrum exercises to strengthen those post throw. And then we'll go into a flush uh, thing with a called a floss band. You wrap around your arm, you do curls, you do extensions, just gets all the, the lactic acid out of the arm. And then, then we're back in the hot tub for 10 minutes and then we're out and then it's, um, Either I'll do ice if I'm really, if I, I throw a high intent, like if they're through a lot of pitches that day, it's gonna be ice. If not, I'll either do uh, that or, I'm blanking on the name, uh, STEM machine. I got you. So yeah, Sounds I mean, great. it's, I mean, I'm an hour and I probably at least an hour after every start of recovery. And then after games, I'm not pitching in the outfit, it's about at least 30 minutes. I'm gonna ask you three questions in succession. Okay. First thing that comes to mind, I want you to answer. Yep. Okay, what do you do well? I throw strikes and I compete. Cool. What do you do differently? Or what would you do differently? Uh, I do, what I, what I do differently than everyone is I'm six foot, I'm not a six five, big, big old guy on the mound. I'm six foot, I'm coming right at you. Cool. What do you think you need to work on? Um, one thing that I really need to work on is being able to not just throw strikes, but throw strikes with a purpose, and and not even just throw strikes with a purpose. Throw balls with a purpose, and understanding that hey, throwing a ball in this counts not a bad not a bad thing. You can they could actually pay dividends later when you face this guy for the third or fourth time in a game. So I think really understanding not just the what's going on right now because sometimes I'll get wait I'll get almost too locked in and how can I get this guy on three pitches? How can we do that? But almost thinking big picture because. In the past couple of years during COVID, I've only been able to go one or two innings because it's more showcase type things. But now we're back into competing, having to win games. So the mindset has to kind of change into, hey, how can I go with a complete game here, save pitches, get guys out, understanding that I need to approach each guy differently, each at bat. So I would say that's one thing I'm really working on right now. Your battles against batters, right? You're pitching. Mm -hmm. Yep. Who walks up to the plate and you're like, here we go? Oh, um, <laughs> this is an easy, easy one. So I have a, I have a, another commit on our team. His name is Peyton Brennan. He's going to UCLA. We grew up since, how old were we? Four, four, four or five. We played every level we've played together. And he gets about um, probably a hundred of bats off me a year. So whenever I'm ramping up for the season, he also is. And I'll just have just him get in the box. Just because like when I know he's in there, like I'm locked in, ready to go because I don't want to have him get a couple hits off me because then I'll start hearing it from him. So, I mean, those battles are pretty intense. There's some, there's been some good moments over the past few years where we're screaming and yelling at each other, letting each other know. So I would, I would definitely say him just not even just based on the fact you see me a ton, but he's just super talented. Doesn't swing at balls. He's going to make you throw the pitch he wants you to throw because he does not mind waiting around until you make a mistake and punishing it. So I would definitely say Peyton Brennan. Tell me your superstitions. Oh. <laughs> so oh, this is a great one. So growing up, like I used to be the craziest superstition freak. Like when I was 12 playing in Little League, like if I had a good game, like I wasn't washing nothing. Exactly what I was wearing was what I was wearing the next game. Wasn't washing anything. 
But I mean, as I've gotten older, you kind of realize like that all kind of goes out the window a little bit. If you're good enough, you're good enough. But I mean, there's still a few things that stick, like how I put my gear on, like if I'm going up the bat, like it goes elbow guard, uh, sliding mitt, right glove, left glove, helmet, then bat. Like, so it's just kind of like those little things that you just kind of pick up along the way that you don't really think about once you start doing them. Or like when I start playing catch, I do two arm swings, like a softball pitcher overhand and then underhand, and then I'll start my throwing. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's only, only a few things, but back in the day, it used to be like, I couldn't, like I wasn't gonna play well if I didn't do my superstitions to a T, but I've kind of gotten over that a little bit. It, baseball is the most superstitious really sport. Oh my it? god, yeah. <laughs> you a have to ask sure. that question. I still oh. have superstitions. <laughs> yeah. Watching a game. I mean, oh my god. It's, <laughs> it's his hair. He won't cut his hair right now. Yeah. Oh. I won't cut the I won't cut the lettuce. Okay, Samson. Want to kind of bring up something? Probably it's going to be near and dear to your heart. Mm -hmm. What kind of influence was your brother with for you? Hmm. Sure, you ask my parents about that one then. Uh, whew. That's a that's a kind of heavy question. So growing up, me and my brother, we never really had the perfect relationship. Like I was always what you would say the better athlete in the family. And I think he definitely probably struggled with that a little bit because he was an athlete growing up too. And like, I, I was, I think I was just like, honestly just gifted a little more. Like I had, I was just a little faster at certain things like that. And I think he really struggled with it when, especially when he got into middle school and I kind of started kind of separate myself in baseball and football. And then I think there was just a point in time where he kind of internalized it and made it like, wow, like this is actually really cool. Like my brother's really good at this and I'm gonna back him. And it kind of turned into this, hey, I'm never gonna let anyone do anything to my brother to ever jeopardize anything. And he became my biggest supporter like overnight. And I would say ever since I was in seventh grade, like that's if I ever had an issue or anything that was ever going on, it was straight to my brother because I knew he could help me or we could figure it out. But man he's he's my dude like he's in the army now so i don't get to talk to him all the time but uh he's serving our country doing what he can and if i ever have an issue or i'm always ever dealing with something like he's the first phone call because i know he's gonna he's been through all he's been through it all with like going to the same school living in the same area like he he knows like what's really going on in my life and i i could not thank him enough or and he does he's done so much for me in my life and he continue he will continue to and He's my biggest supporter and I love him to death.